Welcome. This is an ARX Fit software tutorial. My name is Jim Key. Uh, this video is going to be a deep dive into inroad mode, which is one of the protocols available in ARX Fit's new interactive exercise software. I'll give a brief overview, then I'll demonstrate inroad mode and how it works. And finally, I'll give a brief summary of just a few of the different applications of inroad mode that we've come across just so far. Uh, so to get into it, uh, again, this is the first screen that you see when you start up the ARX Fit software. Uh, for purposes of this demonstration, we're going to go demo mode. And let's just pick pull down over here. And now we're into the protocol selection screen. Uh, there will be deep dives on countdown and time trial and other videos. Uh, but we are going to choose inroad mode. And when we do, this is what we see. Um, so, like a brief overview before I actually press start and demonstrate. Uh, Inroad mode is for those who are looking for the most efficient possible way to initiate their body's adaptive response to exercise. For those who are not looking for the answer to the question, like how much exercise can I tolerate, but are instead looking for the answer to the question, how little exercise do I actually require? Uh, with the understanding that our joints have a shelf life and our time is valuable. So the way inroad mode works is that before the set starts, you select a percentage of inroad that you would like to achieve. In other words, how fatigued would you like to get? For example, if the most you can lift is 100 pounds and I give you 60 pounds and then you lift it over and over again until you can no longer lift the 60 pounds, I know that I have fatigued you 40% and we can say that you have achieved a 40% inroad into your starting level of strength. And the level of fatigue you reach and the speed with which you reach that level of fatigue combine to provoke or to set into action your body's repair mechanisms, which then produce healthier, stronger, better performing muscle tissue. Uh, any scheme that you might now be using with your equipment, uh, three sets of 10, one set to failure, a time under load of 45 seconds or 60 seconds or 90 seconds or two minutes or whatever, uh, any scheme like that is just trying to manipulate this inroading process. Well, what if instead of arbitrary repetition ranges or arbitrary time under load ranges, we could tell precisely for every person how much fatigue they required to get stronger week after week after week after week? Uh, well, now for the first time, we can finally give an accurate answer to the question of how little exercise does each person require? And if they keep getting higher maxes and higher intensities and better numbers week after week after week at, say, 40% in road, well, then you bump them down to 35%. If they continue getting stronger at 35%, well, you bump them down to 30 and so on and so on. And perpetually, you have this uh, increase in intensity while the volume gets lower and lower. And the client continues to improve, continues to get all the strength, health, and performance benefits of strength training uh, with less and less and less wear and tear on the joints and less and less wasted time in the process. Um, so here's how it actually works. Uh, first, here's what we track. We're tracking uh, the elapsed time of the set. Uh, we're tracking max, which is your maximum force output that you produced at any time during the set. Uh, your intensity, we track that, and that is just your work over time, your output over time. So how much you did divided by how much time it took for you to do it. Um, what we track, that's what we track in real time. And then you see that little empty table to the right. That's the date of the set, the percent inroad that you were set at, your max that day, your intensity that day, your output, which is a running total, an accumulating total, and then the time, the elapsed time, how long the set took. The percentage of inroad itself can be adjusted using those little arrows. You can take 75% of someone's strength if, uh, if you really want to uh, have a party, or you could go all the way down to say 20%, whatever you feel as the trainer uh, that somebody requires. So let's say you set it at 40% and you press start. You'll notice that it's at zero, that little blue, uh, blue box with the white number. That's what the force cell is reading in real time. So if I begin to exert, that draws a line. Now you'll notice that your force output in real time is along the y-axis and elapsed time is along the x-axis. And so as you go through the set, you begin to draw your own individual strength curve. 
And people go through, and depending on what protocol you use it for, uh, people draw two different types of curves. Now, I'm going to explain two different contexts that we can use uh, that green work zone. And again, that green work zone represents 40% of your starting level of strength. And that green zone, check this out. So if the max goes above, the green zone moves up. Uh, so it's we're taking 40% of your strength today. It's based on your max from today. Now, in practice, here's how it works. Let's say I have someone doing a negative only protocol. And I want them to do negative only, and they're going to keep doing these negative reps until they can no longer get up into the green zone. And when they encounter the repetition, when they can no longer get up into the green zone, I'll know for sure that I have fatigued them 40% and then they're done. So it'll look like this. Let's say that first one was his first rep, and then the second rep, and he gets up there, does his negative, move the machine back, his third rep, and he slowly goes like this, and we can watch him fatigue over time. You can see the subject getting weaker and weaker and weaker as a result of the exertion. And he keeps going, let's say he barely gets up that time. Now fast forward to the end of the set, let's say he I can't quite get up. He's done. I would press stop and that would be it. That would be the end of the set. So uh, it's very applicable to things like negative only sets or continuous rep sets and any sort of protocol with the idea that when you can no longer get up into the green zone, well, you're done. We've fatigued you whatever percentage uh, we decided we were going to fatigue you. Um, now, kind of a, a broader context for this would be the context of timed static contraction. And in a rehabilitation context, a medical context, uh, or even someone who wanted to have a workout that didn't interfere with recovery as much. Uh, someone who wanted uh, like, like a not to failure workout kind of thing, something just to draw blood into the working muscles and get a little workout in, get the heart rate up, get a pump, bro, uh, without messing up the recovery from the big workout. And it would work like this. You'd set the person in a comfortable range of motion uh, and then you would have them begin to exert and they would exert and they would push harder and harder and let's say that the max was like right around here and that was as hard as they could push then you say draw me a horizontal line just keep it up there and they'd keep it up there they keep it up there and eventually they'd start huffing and puffing a little bit the heart rate would go up the burning in the muscle would begin and then what you would notice is that etch-a-sketch style they would begin to fatigue over time. Now, uh, for the guy in his late 60s getting ready for his knee surgery, or for the 30-year-old who's got Lyme disease and his joints hurt so he can't do dynamic protocols, or for the 90-year-old woman, and this is her first time strength training since uh, the Carter administration, uh, this is the perfect protocol because it uh, thoroughly works the muscles without undermining the joints in the process. And when they get down here, you're like, yeah, I'm going to have to stop this ride unless you, you buck up. Uh, and so they're trying, they're trying, they're trying. And finally, they can't keep their head above water. They fall out of the green zone and they are done. And as they stop, and I press stop, and then you get to see their entire set uh, over time graphically represented. Another cool thing is that if someone's doing positives and negatives, you get to point to the peaks and point to the valleys and say, you see? This is the difference between your eccentric strength and your concentric strength. Um, so that's how it works in practice, and that's what it looks like when it's going. And obviously, if this were a regular client, uh, that table to the right would be filled with data. And you could scroll that data and show somebody trends in their maxes. You could uh, show them how they're getting stronger. Their intensities would be higher and higher. And intensity, again, is just your rate of work, your output over time, as it were. Uh, so those two contexts, those two uses are pretty common uh, uses of inroad mode. And along with time static contractions and negative only, you can use inroad mode with rest pause repetitions. Uh, you know, negative positive, take a couple breaths. Negative positive, take a couple breaths. When you can't get up in the green zone, you're done. Uh, continuous repetitions or hyper reps, where it's just all go all the time. Uh, or anything else you can think of where you might need to know exactly how fatigued someone was. So. That's cool and everything, but here's the punchline. Here's the application of this. Let's say you have a big, strong, powerful, fast twitch type athlete, and you set him at 40% inroad. 
he might be able to achieve that level of inroad and get up into the green zone uh, only for about four or five repetitions. Uh, so on the sixth rep, let's say he can no longer get up into the green zone. He's done in five or six reps. Now, let's say you have a slow twitch endurance type athlete. You put him on the same movement for the same 40% inroad. And because he's more slow twitch, he can stay up into the green zone, his green zone, for two minutes or more, for like 10 or 15 reps. There's this huge variation in the athletic population, a giant bell curve. And if you had these guys doing sets of 10 or 45 seconds time under load or one minute or two minutes or whatever, you would never be able to achieve a perfectly matched and most importantly, quantifiable level of fatigue. We can now tell exactly how fatigued someone is. If the recipe says to cook the steak for 10 minutes, but after four minutes, you notice that your steak is done, there's no good reason to leave it on longer. Uh, some people's steaks are done after five reps, some after 20 reps, and everywhere in between, of course. And inroad mode uh, on the ARX Fit software kind of allows you to tailor the workout to each individual every single time. Um, yeah, so there you have it. Uh, ARX Fit's inroad mode, a precisely quantified way of getting the most efficient possible workout.